Hello everyone, welcome back to Everlasting Summer, Day 7. Let's go ahead and get the final day out of the way. Okay, there are probably worse things in life than falling asleep while being cuddled by a little girl. And now the door opens and armed men leap towards us. I can't make out what they're screaming, but their intentions are clearly far from good. Nah, no, I'm not scared at all. Rather, I'm embarrassed or even ashamed. When I opened my eyes, it took me some time to realize where exactly I was. It was dark in here. Only a dim light was gleaming under the door. Why did they make storage rooms without windows? Although obviously that's the way it should be, but why on earth would anyone bring a TV set and VCR in here then? Or maybe because it's a storage room. Maybe they're storing it in there. I cursed our architects of this building in my mind and shook Yelena by her shoulders. Come on, get up now. She stretched out and as we were lying together, I could see her sleepy eyes even in the dark. What? Let me sleep. Yelena tried to turn away, but I firmly grabbed her shoulder with my hand. I don't know what time it is, but regardless, it would be smart for us to get out of here. Not now, later. She whispered half asleep. I said, wake up, come on. I jumped up and easily pulled her to her feet. You go? moaned Yelana with frustration in her voice. I started to look for the light switch, but then suddenly her footsteps outside the door. My heart sank. Why so early? We have a chuckle of work to do, not time to waste. You know what, we had to do it all before their departure. All right, fine. It looks like our two amped up cybernetics are paying a visit to the clubhouse before the break of dawn today. Shush, I whispered to Yelana. And what's the... She didn't manage to finish her sentence as I silenced her with my hand. Well, I understand all that, but we might at least have waited until after breakfast. Oh, uh, do you have something else to do? Not really. I heard some hesitation in Electronics' voice. Sure you don't want to head off to the library brought in early again? I hadn't had the slightest intention. He replied fretfully. Oh yeah, sure, if you say so. Soon the works kicked off behind the door. I could hear hammer strikes, machines rattling, and Electronics buzzing. Electronic and Shirk were discussing their own matters, so I wasn't paying much attention. I was more interested in knowing when they'll finally leave the building. Rather soon breakfast time is coming, but if we take Shirk's passion into consideration... Let go of me. Yelena finally wrestled to her way out, but didn't raise her voice after all. Why can't we just leave? She asked under her breath. And what do you think? It's all fine? Well, that was the problem. We spent the whole night here together, and it's obvious what they'd assume considering I'd taken precaution of closing the door. So? What do you mean, so? I tiredly sigh. Just trust me, I know what it, that it doesn't matter to you, but it does to me. Okay, fine, we'll keep hiding here, agreed Yelana resentfully. I was prepared to wait for a long time if necessary, but barely a couple of minutes later, the door, front door opened and somebody came in. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Morning. It was Slavia. I just want to ask if you happen to have any sticky tape. We do, somewhere, replied Shirk thoughtfully. I'll take a look in the back room. These doors gave me goosebumps and I grabbed the door handle and a stranglehold. Yelena approached oh, Slavia. approached the door from the opposite side and tried to pull it open, but I was straining against the door with all my strength. It's locked. It can't be. We never locked that room. Let me try. Shirk ringed the door handle, but nothing happened. Oh, that would take a lot more effort for me to hold it steady. Oh, it's stuck. Give me a hand here. In a few moments, we were trying to open the door together with the electronic. I, get, I grasped the handle as if my whole life was depending on it. But regardless, there was a short struggle. My hands quickly gave out and I let go. The door was open and bright sunlight blinded me so I couldn't see the startled faces of Shurik, Electronic, and Slavia for the first few seconds. Ahem, good morning. Morning. Yelana was standing behind me, so I couldn't see her, but I could feel the embarrassment in her voice. And what are you doing here? Asked Shirk, almost as if he wasn't surprised. Well, there it is, we were watching a movie. Yelena brought a tape, and he had a VCR here. Shirk distressfully stared into the depths of the background. I gave Yelena a nudge in his side until she got the message and displayed the tape. And what's the movie? A barely visible grin crossed Electronic's face. This regular film, a thriller, the latest thriller. Then I imagine what he and others are thinking right now, and I was over, uh, overwhelmed with rage. We think we nothing like that. 
That's all my fault. I remember from the guy to pick this. That's all my fault. <sighs> Nobody's accusing you of anything. Said it's five without looking at me. At least there's one sensible person among all the present here. Yet, she added under her breath, What? Everything was exactly as he told you. You want to join the conversation? We were just watching a film and then felt sleepy. It was so late. We didn't think anything. Just a stupid situation. Come on, enough. Let Chang try to put it off the jest. I think Olga will be the judge here. Savia so said in a cool voice, Hey, wait. Why do you take this to camp leader? Who else? But you see, we're telling the truth. I'm not the one to judge. Damn it, then who? You have seen everything with your own eyes. That's for the camp leader to decide. Savia so said quietly and turned to go. Just wait. I, I appeared before the door in a single bound and blocked her way. Listen. This is not my business. Slavia is trying to avoid my gaze. It seems like she is also uncomfortable about this situation. I'm just obligated to. Who am I ob ob blah, 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 obligated to? Why do you need to do this? Because she was unable to find the words to finish. So I, so, so you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to tell anyone anything. No, she said nervously, but then raised her head and gave me an intense gaze. I'm sorry, Semyon. Just leave her. Let it go. I turned my head to Ilana. This fraction of a second was enough for Slavia to slip out of the clubhouse. Wait, just wait. I yelled at her, but as she ran, it had no effect. Persuading Slavia in a futile attempt to prevent her from going to the camp leader, it made no sense if she intends to, I can't exactly tie her up. She can't prove anything anyway, Yolanda chuckled. Who cares whether she can prove anything or not? Don't you understand your position in all of this? If any situation you're involved in your guilt as a foregone conclusive? Moreover, in a case like this, well, we are responsible together then. She smirked quick. Oh, I didn't finish that. Exactly. I left the building and sat on the stairs. Well, we will be on your side just in case, right, Shirk? I think so. I don't clearly understand what happened here. But presumably nothing that worrying me. Oh, I didn't think I said that right. Anyway, okay, we are going for breakfast. Soon we lost sight of them. Let's go and eat as well, Yolanda said cheerfully. Food is all you think about. Why bother crying? What will it change? She was right about that, at least. We just have to wait for the camp leader's decision. Let's just go. We headed to the canteen. All the camp had gathered for breakfast except Olga and Savia. It might be for the best, I guess. Who cares? I mean, oh, what? What are you thinking about? Yolanda asked me cheerfully when we took our food and sat. The same thing. Come on, stop worrying about nothing. Maybe it's nothing for you. Well, really, what was particularly bad about that? Every situation can be interpreted from different angles, and especially if you have a reason. Come on, what's the worst thing that can happen? You know, I can't lead her. She's a bit eccentric. Ex well, maybe so, but we didn't. Do anything like that, anything at all. I hope she believes that too. My relationship with Yolanda had improved dramatically lately. At first, I only saw her as a naughty, ill mannered child, but now I started to see the good sides of her character, although there weren't too many. And now, just when everything started, was starting to work out, a hard conversation with the camp leader loomed ahead. Maybe I just jumped at everything that happened, and Slavia's reaction this morning was just caused by surprise. Enjoying your meal? I'll go as hanging over me. She looked at me menacingly. Yes. Why would you mind explaining your behavior? Mind explaining what? Well, for example, example, how you happened to be in a submanic club utility room? Where did you get, t get the key? What were you even doing there? I recall the circumstances in which I obviously this cursed key obtained this cursed key. I should speak to Electronic about that. So as I told you our version, we were watching a film, and I claimed seriously, the whole night. The camp leader asked sarcastically. Then I just fell asleep and Semyon stayed with me. And there was no chance for me to go to your cabins. Not even a tiny watt. And what are you going to say? Well, it sounds really stupid, but she's right. You expect me to believe that? Well, it's the truth. I can't really accuse you of anything. The camp leader started slowly. But on the other hand, this entire situation is beyond normal. Pioneers must not behave this way. And there are too many inconsistencies in your story. We get it. I agree. Fantastic. Blah, blah, blah. I will do the following. Yolanda, you want attention. You will be confined to your cabin, and I will decide what to do with you later. I looked at Yolanda attentively. Contrary to my expectations, she didn't look upset. 
Clearly, I did not think this is your fault, but to be fair, great. You know where to find me in case you need me. She stood up instantly and headed to the exit. Olga didn't try to stop her. There's always too much trouble with her, and she got you into all this. I don't really get what she got me into, and you seem to be too harsh on her. Show me another pioneer like her. The camp leader laughed. God, I'm getting really dehydrated. I'm... Ah. Okay, let's do this. When she receives attentions for misbehaving, that's another story, but here... Actually, I don't really remember, understand what was indeed going what was indeed going on, but my duty is to look after your moral character, and this situation is suspicious, highly suspicious. And how long are you going to keep her imprisoned? I don't know. I'll go ponder for some time. Today is her, the departure, but in these circumstances, what, what departure? I jumped at the word. The term is ending today. This is the last day. Or what? It was the only response I could squeeze out. The last day meaning I'll finally be able to leave this damn camp. Maybe it's time for my time for my suffering to end. And I'll be back to my ordinary reality. But why so suddenly? Sudden for who? I'll talk about it in the lineup. She has a point. At the lineups, I was usually sleeping or looking around, and they didn't really listen to the announcements. And at what time? About five o'clock. Don't forget to get ready. I hardly have anything to pack. She stood up and took a tray and was going to leave. So what's going to happen to Ilana? I don't know yet. I told you. She'll probably leave later. How's that now? Everyone? Well, yes. Is that normal? I was truly surprised. What's wrong with it? I don't know about wrong, but it's quite strange for sure. I still have work to do. Okay. I, I dug aimlessly at my porch, which had gone cold long ago. Departure. The possibility of getting out of here. But on the other hand, Yulana. I have myself felt guilty before her. In the end, she was penalized while I at the same time wasn't. That's not fair. No, it's not like I wanted to share her misery, but I don't think that's it's fair that she sits there locked up. Well, that is still something with some time before leaving. It should be quite enough to make the situation clear. First, I decided to talk to Slavia. I hope she has calmed down. I had gotten used to fighting Slavia at the square, so I went there without any doubts. Why exactly there? Because in this camp, I predominantly met her there. But there wasn't a single soul near Gendis Haven. I stood there for a while looking at the monument, then headed to the library. It makes sense that Xenia could know where her neighbor is right now. After knocking at the door, recalling my previous experience, this is not a useless mannerism. I went in. Xenia distracted herself from her book and looked closely at me. What do you want? What's wrong? Why do you react like that? I can't even come in? What, you came here for no reason? I thought you wanted to read something. Well, no. The classics of Marxist Leninism weren't my favorite literature. I wanted to know where Slavia is. Why do you want to know? She said that as if she was sure that the conversation is over and thus proceeded with her reading. Well, since I'm asking, clearly I need to know. Should be on the pier. Xenia answered indifferently. Thanks. Learning what I wanted to know, I hurried out of this stronghold of malice. Yes, Zinya has a tough spirit. At least I have issues understanding her. On the pier, some pioneers were pulling boats in the docks, while the others were running around with oars or ropes. After looking closely, I noticed Slava, who sat quiet, far away near the water. Cleaning up, I asked the most neutral question that came to mind. Yep, she answered without turning. Listen, I want to talk about Ilana. Well, yeah. Honestly speaking, I have no idea what to talk about. Slavia found us in the storage room, got it wrong, and told everything to the camp leader. Now it's not her concern anymore if you think about it. On the other hand, it would be a waste of time to talk to Olga now. And maybe I just subconsciously wanted to understand Slavia's reason to be able to absolve her somehow. So what do you want to say? Well, Milana got punished, and maybe she won't even leave with us. No wonder. I just want to explain to you that nothing special happened there. Frankly speaking, I don't know. I just had to report everything. So... You did. Did it leave anyone better off? I mumbled to myself. Of course, I'm not sure that it was right. She said, confused. Whatever. Well, that's what's done is done. Do you think it's possible to get Yulana freed from house arrest? You're worrying about her so much. Yulana Slavia finally looked at me and smiled. Not about her, about justice. Well, I was a bit confused. I found the right answer. Well, you know I can't lead her. I do, that's for sure. Just wait. She'll calm down eventually. Yeah, I guess that's the best decision. Yes, you're right. I stood near her in silence for some time. Sorry I didn't seem eager to keep on talking. 
so there was some sense of incompleteness, but faced with the idea of this uncomfortable situation lasting for several hours, I decided not to be a burden. Okay, I'll go then. See you, she smiled. In the middle of the square, I stopped to think. There is still a lot of time in the departure, and I have nothing to do. Yes, just yesterday, when I seemed like I was stuck here forever and had lots of time, even though there was actually very little, I felt a need to think and act faster. But now that I've only got five hours left till I leave this camp forever, I have not the slightest idea on how to spin them. I decided to visit Yolanda. After all, even if she is allowed to leave her cabin, that doesn't mean I cannot pay her a visit. I knocked gently. You are not welcome here, an angry voice sounded from behind the door. Well, the hand entered. Help, hail prisoner. Oh, it's you. Yolanda said disappointedly. And what am I, the only one who isn't welcome here? I tried to smile. Why did you come? Well, I thought that you'd be bored here all along. I'm fine. I mean, all alone. Where is Elisa? As you can see, not here. Come on, why are you so angry in the morning? You are in much a better mood. Angry at me? Not me, that's for sure. You have nothing else to do, but so you came here, right? Yeah, my bad. I sighed theatrically and hung my head. Well, sit down then. I sat on the opposite bed. So tell me something. Let's come up with a way to prove to Algo that we did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong, Ilana corrected me. You seem to have nothing to do with it. Okay, let it be. But why? A tricky question. It feels that we swapped our roles. I was suggesting a stupid plan while she was a voice of reason. Oh, because we did nothing wrong. What's the matter with you anyhow? I'll just stay grounded for a couple hours and that's it. Well, I'll have to depart soon anyway. Steve so flopped down the bed and stared at the ceiling. Well, sure, but I tried hard to cheer up. But it looks like I haven't succeeded so far. Want to do something, maybe? It's lunchtime already. I took a glance at my watch. Yeah, right. Here's a job for you, sis. I must go out and bring me something to eat. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. I saluted her and hurried her out of the cabin. Recently, I started to think that finally something had clicked in Yolanda's mind. Maybe that punishment had an effect on her, or possibly it was something else. And my attitude towards her has changed. Her wrongdoings used to make me feel nothing but irritation, but now there was also understanding and a sort of sympathy. After all, I used to be a child too. Perhaps one, if one explained to her what is right and what is not, she might be able to avoid many mistakes. In the canteen, I had an argument with the cook who refused to give me double servings. However, everyone in camp already knew about Yolanda being grounded, so eventually my powers of persuasion won out over the dietary standards. Soon I was sitting at Yolanda's cabin and tucking away meatballs with potatoes. Just like a last meal. What are you talking about? Well, every death row prisoner has the right to make a last wish. That's my last wish is a lunch like this. Hmm. To my surprise, the food was really delicious. What would your wish be? Well, not to be executed, of course. She laughed. You can't. Why, if you can wish for anything? Well, you can't, but with certain limits. That means it's not anything. Well, okay, then. It's not anything. Well, then... That's not interesting. Well, I believe being a death row prisoner is hardly meant to be interesting in the first place. I grinned through my teeth. I wouldn't know. I never went through that experience. But if you think about it, that's almost my situation. This camp is my cell. For several more hours, I'll stay under arrest and then I'll face uncertainty just like I would after death. The only difference is that I had more options if I wanted to attend the lineup than I do so. If not, then I didn't. What are you pl- going to do next? What do you mean? Well, after this camp. She looked at me in surprise. Back to school, of course. Yes, only for me, leaving this place is kind of like crossing a barrier, a frontier, the end of something and beginning of something else. A week ago, it was terribly hard for me to realize that I had been pulled out of my usual world and brought to God knows where. Got used to it. And here we go again. Basically, the only difference is that now I face on a sense of fear and horror, but a blunt, sinking feeling of uncertainty. And you? I will. I'll find something to do. Something? She burst into appeals of laughter. Yeah, what's the matter? You should have gone to a circus school to be a clown. Why? One can help laughing when looking at you. But why? You always act like some kind of martyr, martyr or whatever. I knew Messiah for all the Russians. Well, there is quite a bit of truth in her words. I have my reasons. I mumbled and turned to the face of the window. What reasons? Various. Why are you so curious? Have you forgotten that I'm a child? She couldn't actually. Yeah. Well, half an hour with you is like a terrible torture for me. Look who's talking. You're just a really nasty-tempered person. What makes you think so? You're always deep in soul-searching. 
trying to find out something and analyzing everyone around you. I get, it gave you an amazed look. I would never have expected such a little girl to be capable of such mature judgment. And that's it. At least, very no. Uh, at the very least, I know how to behave myself, and I don't end up grounded. It's a matter of chance. She grinned. Yeah, sure. If last night she stopped short, last night what? Nothing. No, finish what you started. She just opened her mouth when steps were heard behind the door. Second later, Uncle uh, Uncle into the room. Ah, oh, there you are. That's even better. She seemed confused and lost for words. Well, I consider this morning's incident. It's not like it became much clearer, but it doesn't look like a big deal. So I know you're not. You're officially not grounded anymore. If only you did that right from the start. I'm murdered. Did you say something? No, nothing. Departure is coming. Time to pack your stuff. Saying that, she left the cabin. Now you see it, how it all turned out. Yeah, I sighed. Are you going to pack? Yeah, I guess so. And you? It's not like I got much to pack. Indeed, it was true. Care to help me then? Okay, sure. Why not? She started to pull her clothes out of the cabinets and stuck them on her bed. Watch it, you'll mess everything up. It's okay, I'll wash them at home. T-shirts, skirts, shorts, dresses, shoes, trainers, and underwear. The piles of clothes was growing and growing. You really put all this stuff here on your own? Considering Yolanda's constitution, it was hard to believe. Yes, of course, she laughed. Come on, give me a hand. We started to pack up the clothes into a big bang. I tried to pack things carefully at first. After realizing that it was pointless, we sort of to just stuffing it in and to make it all fit. At last, there were no more clothing clothes on the bed, but we even somehow managed to zip up the bag. So that's it. Yeah. I looked at the clock. It was about 40 minutes until the departure time. You know, it was fun. Meaning, well, that last week was fun. Ah, oh, yeah. I said absentmindedly. Don't you think so? Why? It sounds so it sounds so and blah, blah, blah to me. Well, I must admit that I'm not exactly walking on air, yeah. But what didn't you like? It was unlike that I can spit everything out at once. You see, a few minutes were, how I can I put it, a little unexpected. Blah, you're so boring, said Yolanda and turned away from me. Well, what do you expect from me? You sound like you got absolutely nothing to remember later. Yeah, there's sure plenty to remember, I gleamed. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I look, she looked closely at me. That made me a bit uncomfortable. What now? Emmy, will you remember me? Sure, I will. Everyone, everyone, and you, most of all. I saluted, speeding up to attention with my hand over my heart. That's better. However, did I really have something to remember about her? Yeah, we had a lot of adventures, but who is Yolanda for me? Just a nosy kid from another reality? On a second thoughts, do I really care that much about my situation now? From the very first moment I appeared here, everything changed tremendously. So right now, I was just curious what's going to happen next. Sure, the unknown is the most pleasant perspective, but I must admit that it's breaking one. Whether I return to my world or not, it's not up to me anymore. It means that I don't really have another choice. I have to adapt to the local living conditions. One of those, these conditions was sitting right in front of me, smiling broadly. You know, you're not as silly as I first thought. Why did you think I'm silly in the first place? She said in an offended tone. Just kidding. You and your jokes. All right, it's time. Let's go. Elon said happily and pointed at the back. Yeah. I, sh I shouldered her belongings. The way almost made me bend in half. I was thankful for the fact that the bus was just a few hundred meters away. I shoved her stuff onto the bus and then hurried to get my own humble luggage. After some time, all the pr pioneers were here. Everyone is here? Began Olga. You're leaving our camp today, and I'd like to tell you something in parting. She was visibly nervous and desperately lost for words. I hope that you'll remember the time you spent here for a lifetime and that you'll retain only pleasant memories about solving knock. I also hope that you become at least a little bit better, managed to learn something, and found new friends. Just come back next year. The camp leader turned away. And it seems she was trying to hold back her tears. I wasn't expecting her to get so emotional, but I completely agree with everything she said. Perhaps it was the first time her words haven't just passed my ears. Soon enough, everyone boarded the bus. I took the last seat next to Yolanda. The first row was taken by Slavia and Zinya. They didn't look closer to us. Lena, Miku, Electronic, and Shirk were playing cards. Elisa slouched in her seat along two rows from us. There was no partner for her. It turned out a bit embarrassing for your neighbor. It's fine. You helped me get ready and brought my stuff here. 
I looked at her closely. It seems that this little demon has changed her attitude towards me in a radical way. Could it be that my friend to her? And our words seem to have lost its meaning for me ages ago. I can't recall any of my acquaintances when I still had them, who I called friends. Maybe even back when I was at school. And now someone gets just me a friend. Anyway, what does this all mean to me? I always felt more comfortable thinking about abstract stuff, distant perspectives, and global matters than of simple ordinary issues. And indeed, during all this time I had spent in this camp, I managed to become close with Johanna. She awakened these long forgotten feelings in me, because this is what it means to be buddies or friends. I smiled and touched her hair gently. And what's that for? She puffed her lips. Just because. Pervert. Will you marry me when I grow up? Sure. I'll hold you to that. Okie dokie. Let's go join them at cards. Why not? We gathered around the suitcase that was being used as a table. Soon and Lisa joined us. I was laughing a lot, cracking jokes, and just enjoying being in one state one usually calls happiness. A simple happiness here and now. Right now, this bunch of behaviors that I managed to be friend in this short week were a million times more important to me than finding out how I came to this world and how to get out of here. In the end, should I even bother trying to get back? It was getting dark. The game was long over, and the pioneers had returned to their seats. I had no idea how it would take, how long it would take to get to the district center, but it seemed like an eternity. From beyond the windows, only pitch darkness was looking back at me, almost consuming the entire world, compressing to only the sides of the Icarus cabin. Anyway, the surroundings were at least of my concern now. I was enjoying the moment. It seems that this reality is completely normal, and does it really matter how I got here if things turn out this great? I became another person and met new friends. What are you thinking about? About life? And how is it going? Just awesome. You want to laugh quietly? I don't have a place to return to, so I can choose any life path I want. Yes, we will part ways soon, and I'll probably never see most of them again. But we'll stay friends forever. A pleasant warmth flowed through my body. I felt like a kid again. You want to put her head on my shoulders and quickly fall asleep. Sometimes you may feel tired, not only because of hard work or sad feelings, but also because of fun, joy, and happiness. You may probably even want to continue, but have no energy to, with your soul demanding time to rest and your body asking for calm. I fall asleep with a smile on my face. My lips are dry. I'm glad this video is probably over, almost over. Okay, well, it's day dot dot dot, which is also the epilogue. Um, so I'm in this video here, and I will do the epilogue the, um, in the next video, guys. So I'll see you then.